Hello guys, it is me, the Tank and Next here, and today we're going to be talking about the Marion Wagon, which is going to really could basically conclude the whole, you know, not only World War One but German tanks in general, which, you know, also, we're going to be starting the Interwar slash World War Two series in a few videos, because I still have a few, I still have about two left in regards to actual World War One. um, I'm sure I'll eventually find some crazy World War One tanks that, that I like to cover, but you know, for now we're gonna be moving on. But uh, yeah, let's just get to the Marion Wagon. So, um, Germany was honestly already thinking of mechanization before World War One. Um, they were basically thinking, okay, what if there's a truck that's able to go cross country, and it'd be, and basically they thought they'd be able to tow anti-aircraft guns. Be you know, Germany was sort of like. Maybe planes and zeppelins might be something the enemy has too. Um, or maybe artillery pieces before World War One. Um, you know, small field guns and such. In June 15, 1915, Bremer began producing a uh, version of that in the Daimler factory in Berlin, Mannerfeld. It had several forms of several levels of tracks, but we're all based off the simple Daimler 4-ton lorry as seen here. In a very simple design. Um, you can see that the two-track system was kept. Um, when British tanks basically came up in 1960 at the Somme, the Marienwagen was basically turned into a desperate stopgap trying to type combat that fight. You know, they're like, the Germans were basically like, okay, we have this, you know, truck that's armored. Oh, we kind of really need mechanized vehicles to combat their mechanized vehicles. We know the, they basically knew at the exact at the exact start of the project. Okay, these tanks are gonna be shitty, but they'll do until we make something better. And honestly, we just need to get something out there right now. Um, and this is the Sten gun of uh, World War One tanks. So, an order was going to turn ten of them into armored fighting vehicles, which were supposed to be delivered by February nineteen seventeen. Joseph Vollmer was put in charge of the project, who was Germany's primary tank designer of World War One. He was behind. Every tank in the war, basically the A7V, the K Vag, and everything, the LK. Um, he aimed to put an armored hull on it with some rudimentary spring suspension, which would be more than the, you know, British tanks had. Um, the front tracks were basically for stealing, while the back ones would actually be the ones moving the vehicle. Um, the results were the armored Marienwagen. Officially, the Marienwagen 1 meets Panzer Aufbau. Wow, my German needs some work if I'm going to be covering World War II. Um, it was completed by the early spring of 1917, and it could be sort of seen as the first German tank, I guess. I mean, I, maybe. It depends on your definition. Um, it was much more of a armored personnel carrier, though, with no fixed armaments. Um, it was supposed to be equipped with two machine guns, likely, you know, MG08s, two 20 maker Becker AA guns, and a flamethrower. So, like I said, these were stopgap, um, shitty tanks, and they were basically like, well, we have no armor, we have little speed, so we might as well just put whatever we can on it. You know, it could fight infantry, it can fight the air. Perfect. Um, and honestly, this thing had already failed before trials. Um, in October 1916, the vehicle had already been labeled by officials as unsuitable. The Prussian War Office, though, was pushing forward the first armored divisions, though. The Sturmpanzerkraftwagen Abteilung 1 and 2. So a demonstration was set up in front of Ludendorff, Hindenburg, and other general staff members at Mainzer Sand on March 11, 1917, um, which was basically the major um, trial of all German tanks World War I, which would later adopt, result in the adoption and acceptance of the Sturmpanzerwagen A7V, even though at the time it was only a wooden mock-up. It was still better than everything else, which um, really shows you how bad the other competition was. As for trials, it was an absolute disaster, honestly. First off, it was far too underpowered, especially with all the weapons they were going to put on it. The engine was just not strong enough. Um, second, it was too tall and top-heavy. Um, you know, the A7V, you would see how prone to toppling over it was. And once it t toppled over, you really couldn't. But at least it was a lot wider. Um... You know, and I mean, it, it was toppling over more than a 7 v was saying something. It was so bad that Ludendorff, as you can see, I made a very shitty demonstration of his face at the time, probably. Um, lost, literally, he, just from the video tank, he was basically like, okay, tanks are useless. We just stopped German tank development and settled on other areas of the war. And this basically led to the subordinates of the project, Hundleby and Strassheim, arguing for a while about the ta with the tank program basically stalling and being highly delayed. If Ludendorff, if the Marienwagen wasn't this bad... Ludendorff might have stayed on the plane and we might have seen a lot more German tanks. 
So literally the Marian Faggot literally caused the stalling of the entire German tank program World War One in World War One in World War One. Um that's literally how bad it is. Finally though, the Marian Wagon was scrapped. Except it wasn't quite yet. See, a privately funded project was later taken where a Marian Wagon was fitted with an armored hull in the turret of an Earnhardt armored car and basically turned into a type of semi tractor vehicle. We don't know why this was really done, but it was done by someone. And honestly, this would later be seen very similar in the Nazi half-tracked APCs. Um, though the correlation probably doesn't exist, it is interesting that people were already thinking of this type of sort of thing. This was basically the Germans' Mark IX APC, which the British have made. But now, as for the final assessments, the Mountain Wagon was perfectly fine vehicle as an armored lorry. If it had remained simply a smaller armored vehicle that would only be lugging around artillery pieces or house some AA guns in the back lines out of enemy fire as more of a support role, it would have been a far better vehicle. Then its underpowered nature would not would have been a lot less of a problem, along with the top heaviness not being a problem because it's not going to be the thing fighting along enemy lines. So it's not as bad if it topples over because it's probably not going to be in direct fire. However, as an armored fighting vehicle, it just... Awful. I mean, it is planned with far too much weaponry for an engine that's far too weak for its weight and its massive height. It would be an awful AFE. What we really have to think about is the basically the place Germany was in right now. It basically needed to get whatever it could get out, get it out. Um, later they just throw out some anti tank rifles, which were more successful than the Marion Wagon could ever hope to be. But you know, its situation really just doomed the vehicle from ever being successful. I do hope you enjoyed the video. The next two videos are really going to be the last ones in World War One, which is sad because it's literally my favorite era of tank design. So uh, that's sad. The next three years, yes, I plan that far ahead, are going to be. I'm so far. I have about 200 inner war and World War One tanks, I think. So if I do two videos a week and there's about like what 50 weeks in a year, that'll take me two years. Um. God, um, and then I have about a hundred uh, Cold War slash um, modern tanks. And not that there's not a, a lot of them. It's just you know they weren't there weren't light heavy tank, light heavy medium tanks. It's mainly all MBTs. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time on another World War One topic.